Hey guys, Coach Matt over here, Primal Athlete Training Center, www.primalatc.com. Hey, I'm going to ask you guys just like I do every day, make sure, forward this information along to your friends, your teammates, and your coaches, anybody else who's interested in strength and conditioning for larger power athletes and throwers, this is the place where you should be coming to get more info. This is the place you should be coming to get your technique questions answered on a daily basis. Not once a month or once every week. Every single day I'm putting up new blog posts and new videos to help you become a better thrower and improve in your sport. So make sure you let your friends, your teammates, and your coaches know PrimalATC.com is the place to come if you have questions and need answers fast. Now, what I'm going to be covering today is a very common problem that happens with uh, rotational throwers, whether it's the rotational shot or whether it's discus. And that is um, not landing correctly in the middle of the circle, over-rotating, I guess you can call it, and not landing with that power foot in the middle of the circle in that proper power position. And what I mean is this. What I'd like to do is set up for you guys where the footwork should be. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a couple of kettlebells to make that backwards C position of the discus circle or the rotational shot put circle. And what, I, what I, I'm sorry, backwards, I think I said backwards C, backwards 7 I should say. So what I'm going to do is put down a couple 20 kilos to identify where my feet would be starting. Back them up just a little bit. So my feet would be starting right around this area, okay? The middle of the circle, I'm going to mark with this red 16 kilogram. So the middle of the circle is going to be somewhere around here. So again, we're going to stand, we're going to turn. That's going to be the middle of the circle. And then where the blocking leg ends up, I'm going to put it right here. So what you should see is it kind of looks like, when you look down at it, it looks like a backwards 7. You've got the top of the 7 right here, and then you've got the tail of the 7 going down right along the left sector line. I always like to use the left sector line because if you continue to cut straight across the circle, it's going to make the bottom half of that number 7. So this should hopefully show you guys what I mean. But what we're concentrating on today is this position right here, which is the center of the circle. This is where your foot should be hitting close to every time you drive in the middle of that circle. So keep this in your head. I'm going to move these kettlebells away. Keep this in your head because I want you guys to identify where the middle of the circle is. Okay? So let's get these out of the way. Get these 20s out of the way. Get this one out of the way. All right, so hopefully you still have in your head where that is. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate what the email to me the other day said, which is the person was not landing. That power leg, that power foot was nowhere near the middle of that circle. Um, so what it looks like is the person more than likely in the discus, they're starting out, they're getting low left and long, low left and long, and they're over rotating, boom, over to the left half of that circle. Instead of driving right down the middle, they're over rotating and they're landing way over here to the left half of that circle. Now what that's going to do is that is going to, when you finish the movement, your hips are going to be open, and when you throw, you're going to be throwing down the right sector line. Right sector line is like a magnet for right-handed uh, high school discus throwers. And it all has to deal with footwork. So if your footwork is not correct, if this power foot, power leg is not landing somewhere near the middle of that circle, you're going to be throwing down the right sector line like crazy. Now let me show you the number one problem that happens with high school throwers as to the reason why this happens. When you're in the back of the circle, and you get low, left, and long. You have to keep in mind that this is a rotation. It is not a spin. And what happens a lot of times is even if the athlete gets low, left, and long,
they will continue to rotate in a 360 and never drive down the middle. They'll just simply rotate in a 360 and what will happen is that a power foot will end up way over to the left because they're rotating like this and then they're just planting the foot down. What do you think is going to happen? You've got this long right leg and when it's going to plant, it's not going to go right down the middle. You need to extend, okay, picture this in your head, extend that tail, the leg, the bottom of that seven, all the way outside of that circle. So when you get to where your foot is now hovering over, you need to start to drive down the middle of that circle. So it's actually, there's a slight pause. So when you're turning out, you're turning out, boom, and then you're driving down the middle of that circle. So there's no inactivity, I guess you can say. There's no waiting for the foot to come around. As soon as you get to the point where you're right down that left sector, you're going to turn and you're going to drive right down the middle. Drive those feet, explode down the middle. You're actually making it two movements. It kind of looks like a kind of a screwed up question mark. The foot's going to go out, and when it gets to a certain point, boom, it's going to drive right down the middle. So it's like a question mark. The foot's going to come out. When it gets to a point, you're going to take a slight pause. We're talking like a tenth of a second, a quarter of a second pause. And then you're going to drive down that left sector line, down the tail, down the leg of that backward seven. Let me show you a few more times. So instead of that, you need to drive. Turn, boom, and drive down the middle of that circle. Explode down the middle of that circle. You don't just let the foot passively come around. When you get to that point, you're going to explode and sprint and drive down that circle. Now, a great drill to teach this is doing that turn into a South African. Okay, South African, we all know. And a lot of times what you see with high school guys is the South African looks fantastic. Then when they put that little turn on it, it gets just thrown in a pile of dump, and just a crap pile. It just gets messed up, and you have to spend another month trying to teach this when they already have a perfect South African. So, South African, you start here, and you drive. So now all we're going to do is turn into a South African, and it'll look like this. Turn, South African. Turn into a South African. Turn into South African. And eventually what you're going to do is you're going to stop putting the foot down outside the circle. It'll look like this. Turn South African. Turn South African. Turn South African. So hopefully this explains to you guys one of the most common problems with beginner throwers, especially high school throwers, when they start to begin the full rotation, when they start to begin the full discus throw. Hopefully I did a good job explaining it. Please let me know your thoughts. I know there's always people out there leaving comments, leaving questions. Please continue to do it. I love answering something I do here. The end of a long training day, bang out a video or two, help you guys out. It's Coach Matt from Primal Athlete Training Center, Cranston, Rhode Island, www.primalatc.com. Make sure you keep checking us out. Make sure you let your friends, your teammates, and your coaches know about primalatc.com and how we're helping thousands of throwers all around the world improve their technique on a day-to-day -day basis. Hope to see you soon.